Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, I guess all of us were, hey, we were probably just glued to the TV sets, radio, whatever, and if, if, and if some were lucky, they were able to get, go back east and whatever. What I'm talking about was the 50th anniversary celebrating the, the, the speech of Dr. King. I'll just put it that way, the, the Reverend Dr. King, who basically, basically led the way in many ways, opening many, many doors. And uh, many, many doors were open over the last 50 years. Uh, naturally, everyone has their own view, depending upon their own background, and, i.e. and exposure. But what we're going to do today is that uh, we're going to talk about that, but I think it's going to be most important that we talk to Oregonians about uh, uh, how, how, what did we get out, if you will, of this particular day, which is a very historical date. And uh, so joining me to do this uh, are two in, uh, some individuals that uh, one were, were very familiar with the Dr. King episode and whatever, because you know we have Dr. King Day on an ongoing base. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have the celebration, if you will, and we're fortunate to have uh, one of the founders and leaders, if you will, a gentleman who's been in this community, born, raised here, went to school here, the whole nine yards, gentleman by the name of Ken Berry. He's here with us today. Uh, I remember him when, when I was in the Marine Corps, and he also was a vice principal at Jefferson High School. I mean, he has an educational background that's big, big still time. Still learning. And he's still teaching kids today. That's you know right. what I mean? He's in the business, he and his brother, and, I'm, I'm, and I, I'm really excited about the fact that you're doing that, Ken, in regards to still reaching out to these young people because they've grown up now. Well, they're, keep hearing my head and um, you know, yeah, keep me young. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> and that's a good thing. <laughs> yes. And then his partner, his partner, his partner, Michael Grice, you, you've seen Michael here on the show, you whatever. He's very, very much involved also, too. So we're really excited about the fact that we are going to be partnering with these guys because it's so important that our youth, and that's what it's, where it's all about, we're still reaching out, and they're, they're part of the team, and we, we like to, we, we want to welcome them to the Oregon Doors Digest, and, and they can use our facilities, if you will, to, to, to get the updating, if you will, of some of the, uh, the things that they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing. So, Ken, welcome. Thank you okay. so much okay. for having me here. And then Donna, Donna Maxey, as you note, uh, she was on the show before. And she, too, has a very interesting, very, very solid uh, uh, commitment uh, to something that we need to know more about that could take us into the, to the 21st century, for yes. that matter. We've been so behind in that when you think about the 50 year, 50 year anniversary or whatever, racism was a big word, the whole issue of race, and it's still lingering and whatever. And so to have Donna here with us, you, you, you saw, you, if you haven't seen the show, uh, the, the previous shows, check out the check out the old YouTube and it's sitting there and there's Donna and she in fact she's got her own but I'm not going to promote her as I'm going to promote mine. <laughs> go to digest. But anyway Donna, Donna's got the race talk and she's doing an excellent job here in the Portland metropolitan area and so we're going to take this around the state of Oregon in fact around the country as far as we're concerned because we got the YouTube aspect of it too. So it just makes good so my point is that just sit back relax and uh, in fact get your neighbors and and tell them to turn on the tube, if you will, and, and sit down and enjoy. Uh, we may not, we may have some time to take on a, a few, uh, few calls, but, but in most cases, especially now during these formative years, these formative time, we're just going to just give you the information. And by the way, folks, this is not just a one-sided situation. You know, it's it's about us. It's about our own exposure. We're all creatures of exposure. That's really what we're all about. Some of us have varying backgrounds and whatever. So we need to appreciate that. Regardless of how small you are, regardless of uh, your educational background and whatever, you are somebody. And so we all enjoy it. We're all here together. So with that, Donna, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for Amen. asking. Appreciate me that come. very much. Okay, good. So why don't we start off first by, uh, uh, we can talk about what, what, what you got. We'll just make just a short piece about, um, about what you felt about this 50th anniversary uh, before we get into your respective pieces. Let's get that, and then we get we bring it back home. Then we can start educating folks about what your respective involvement. What do you think about the uh, this time and period? Well, first of all, I, I felt really 
saddened because I wasn't able to get out in March yesterday, but because of some personal reasons, you know, mm -hmm. health and not just uh, feet and back and old age, uh, yes. I decided to kind of just stay home. My wife went out and took pictures for me. I put them on, on Facebook yesterday. And I had a chance just to stay home and watch, observe, and absorb the national level. And I tell you, it was one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had uh, from the standpoint that it brought back so many memories. And I talk about memories, I have to also give you homage, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Bazaar, because the fact that you set the, the pace for us, many of you. I can't forget the fact mm -hmm. about the Honorable Judge Diaz and the <coughs> Gladys McCoys and the Maxi family, just to name a few people who kind of laid out the bar or the expectation for us as young people coming up, what we had to do. So many times people say well hey you know with even with the program that we do with the MLK program that you know it I tell people all the time it's not me it's the fact that we're standing not only on the shoulders of those who have passed on before us we are standing on the shoulders of those who are among us you're one of those Don is one Thank of those you. and we all are working in conjunction in con conjunction with one another and I love the fact that Portland we begin to celebrate Dr. King's birthday prior to his day becoming a national holiday, mm -hmm. thanks to George Page mm -hmm. at yes, KBOO yes. Radio. He's the one that, when we were volunteering at KBOO Radio, he suggested, why don't we put together an all-day celebration of Dr. Mm -hmm. King so we can keep the awareness up? And one of the things like uh, Reverend Haynes was saying, I was on cable on Friday with uh, um, 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 Ms. Harnesty, and she was, and she, she was interviewing Reverend, Reverend Haynes. He kept on saying, we have to raise the consciousness. I want to say Joanne, too, because they Joanne, know thank Joanne. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Joanne Bowman. This old age, my name yeah, didn't Joanne come up. Yeah, Ms. Hardesty, yeah. you know, <laughs> Bowman <laughs> Hardesty. Give her respect. <laughs> That's she's right, one, thank one, you. A warrior, thank you time. so much. Yeah. But, but one of the things, she had a wonderful show uh, mm -hmm. last Friday and interviewed just different people from 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 the backgrounds of, of economic development and just jobs and justice and things of that nature. And Dr. Haynes, what he, what he was stuck in my mind, what he talked about was the importance of us to maintain and to look at our own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because like you said just a moment ago, we are creatures of exposure. We're also creatures of habit. Yes. And if we hear things, we see things, we take things in our various senses, we can't help but adopt what we what we uh, believe in. So that I'll stop right there. Okay, fine. Donna. Donna, what do you think? Yeah. What, what, what were your thoughts? Well, I was able to participate. Um, my knees are still hanging in there yet. Good for you. And um, in fact, I was really touched. I didn't know that Ken wasn't there. I did see his wife taking pictures, and I saw his mother-in-law. That's right. And his mother-in-law was riding a scooter, and I was really touched because about a block from where, where the speakers were going to be, she got off her scooter, and she walked. And I thought, this lady's determined. She is making this walk. This has much significance for her. Juliet I don't, Bowles. I don't know if she was at the uh, at the the original march on yes. Washington. No, was she, she there? No, she no wasn't but there. it was clear to me that it had meaning for her beyond just the event yesterday. If I could just add one connection to that piece, my mother-in-law who's a fantastic lady who's inspired me over the years. I mean, mm -hmm. without her, her guidance and my father-in-law, Willie Bowles as well, my mother-in-law went to school with Coretta Scott King. Oh, wow. And wow. I had a most powerful experience when we got married in 1976 to go to Marion, Alabama, mm. and had a chance to actually meet Coretta Scott King. Mm. Oh, and wow. it was just beautiful to see the connection and, mm -hmm. and just the history behind all that. And they used to have to walk not one or two miles, but we're talking about five miles mm -hmm. down a dirt road to get to the bus in order to go to school right but go ahead I just want to mention so, that so, a... so that that walk when she got off her scooter and she had a little walking chair with her she had a little cane that had a little seat on it I thought this means a whole lot and and it you know it made me it kind of harkens back to the movie which was based on fiction but fact uh, Miss Jane Pittman mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. last scene in the movie mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. she walks up to the drinking fountain and drinks out of the fountain yes, right. yes. and and so it has that meaning that you know this is a momentous occasion mm -hmm. and it was a momentous occasion and I remember back to when I was a child and the original March happened and I sat there riveted to the television watching it and every time I hear Dr. King's speech I cry. I mean because there is so much emotion and I think about the people who gave their lives, not only do we stand on the shoulders of people here locally, we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors and we have an obligation and a duty to carry on yes. and to do and to educate and and to proceed 
in a certain manner, in a, a respectable manner, that gives dignity to the sacrifice that they gave so that we could be here. So it was, it was very touching for me. Um, and I thought, well, gee whiz, I'm here. I'll pass out my race talks um, uh, brochures. So I was, I was, right I was there. doing multi-purpose yeah. yesterday. <laughs> I was, I was dressed as a Delta, yeah, yeah, and right I, I think I, I don't know if I shared with you, Ken, that um, I was recently in Washington D.C. for the hundredth anniversary of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, Wonderful. and we had. 50,000, 50,000 college-educated black women mm -hmm. in downtown mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., wearing all red, all black, all white, or derivations thereof. And it was such a meaningful feeling. And, and we also went over to the... Um, to the to the um, memorial? Lincoln Memorial mm -hmm. and took pictures there yeah, and we're, went all okay. inside the memorial and and it reminded me of the march the original march it wasn't a hot day but all these sisters mm -hmm. were around the pool there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and just what a, what a you know it was it was just it just brought back those emotions mm -hmm. and and what a level of seriousness it was and um, I was sharing with a friend the other day that I was really in as a kid into the politics because it's shaped our lives so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a kid, I knew all the cabinet members, all the governors, all the world leaders. I mean, I could talk about world politics and dad and, and mom. You yeah, 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 it was dad right. and mom. Right. We were doing it, you know. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, and so these are some of the things that we have to make young people understand is that their participation in this march, their watching this march is more than just a single activity. It's part of the thread of the quilt that will lead and make the difference for the future. And so we all are in this together, and we have to be mindful of that. And so I truly appreciated all that uh, Reverend Bethel and, and um, Dr. Haynes and, and uh, Joanne ba uh, Hardesty did to put this together, because it was no small feat. Okay. And there must have been about 2,000, 3,000 people there incredible. yesterday. Was it was a nice crowd. And even as we were leaving, I was walking down the street, going away, carrying my sign. And there were people who stopped me and said, where's the march? So, you right. know, there right. were still right. people right. coming, right. even right. though it had, was, you know, a couple hours afterwards. And as you say, I, I agree, because I, I was there. I, I, had, I, I was there, and it was kind of neat to see all of the folks that were there just mm -hmm. carrying the baton and kind sure. of sharing it. You know, I think about George Harris, and she was there on mm -hmm. the podium, bitch, almost emceeing, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there was Minister Boozer, mm -hmm. and Mrs. Boozer was there, you know what I mean? I, I didn't doubt that. I, I saw Lorenzo Poe holding, mm -hmm. holding the sign, if, if, if you and will. Reverend Modane sang and Modane leading the march. And leading yes. the march. And, I mean, it was Bishop just, Wells. And Bishop Wells was there. So there were a number of notable, notables that, that were there, and I thought that was really just great, if you will. And plus the fact they went downtown. Right, yes. Right. Or nearly, yeah. it's always yeah. the Northeast, Portland, right. Alberta, right. and whatever. Right. Right. But they went downtown, and mm -hmm. I thought that was very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a coalition of a lot of different groups. I, yes. I didn't finish saying that I marched also. I marched, I dressed as a Delta and marched, mm -hmm. and I was passing out race talks brochures, but I'm a member emeritus of the Human Rights Commission of the City of Portland, and mm -hmm. there were a number of human rights commissioners who were Wonderful. there mm -hmm. that were carrying the banner and marching. Mm -hmm. And the Human Rights Commission is working to be out in the community more and hear mm -hmm. more from the community and be involved and bring what the community is interested in mm -hmm. to city council and to the mayor's office. And so I would really like to encourage people to come to the Human Rights Commission meetings on the first Wednesday of the month. Good down yeah. on um, at the uh, I'll see I, I think it's the Commerce Building yeah. but anyway they can contact the Human Rights Commission or go to the website and find out where it is because we all have to be involved yeah, in this right, together right, right, right. What, what was the what was the message that was given out from a national perspective and even local you know they made the points about jobs yes. education economics and whatever <laughs> what, what, what was your take on that Ken? well watching at home you know I yeah. just took my little camera and different spots I thought were really powerful. I just took a picture of it and posted it right on Facebook, you know, oh, wow. different things. And so one of the most powerful pieces, I think, is when we saw Reverend Lowry, when he spoke from the bottom of the steps, because he's now in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said, you know, as we leave here, and he had the audience quote this and chant this, is even though we're coming here to commemorate, let's go back to agitate. Mm -hmm. And he repeated that like 10 or 15 times to remind people that, not in a negative manner, but to remind folks that we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to pass this on to our young people, to empower our young people, and not forget 
from where we came. Like Dr. Martin Luther King said that if we don't know our history, right. we are doomed right. to repeat it. That's so, right. yep. That's right. How about you, Donna? What do you think in terms of the focus there? I wasn't able to see the march yesterday. We had, speaking of personal emergencies, we, we had a personal emergency in our family, and so I left the, the, the march and uh, went and dealt with that. But um, there is so much that we, so far that we have come. And I think about how far we've come and the the goals we were setting up. And I think the movie The Butler mm -hmm. has come out at just the perfect, perfect time, time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it it um, it shows what the history is. Mm -hmm. It shows where we came from and where we've come to. But um, it makes me sad that when I hear people degrading the position of the butler yes. and yeah. and saying that that doesn't have any significance or mm -hmm. that's not the right mm -hmm. way to look at history and the reality is is that were it not for people like the butler mm -hmm. then you and I wouldn't right. be here exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly and that's there's a scene in the movie that is um, credited to Dr. King as saying it's the maids and the butlers and the cooks who are making progress in a very subtle way by showing that these are people who have dignity, we are hardworking people, that we can make a difference. And so even though it's, quote, menial labor, um, it's important labor. If it weren't for the step and fetch it, right. we, wouldn't exactly. have, yeah. Yeah. we wouldn't have Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have Halle Berry. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have Spike Lee's. You know, there are people who have come before us and we each make a dent in in history at the time that we're there and we, we help to wear down the the ropes and the chains of oppression so that it makes it better for the next generation. You know, I want to throw another person on there that I think he's done volumes, if you will, of contributions at this point in time. It was a well-needed time because of, the, because of his character, because of his background and because of his definition. I'm talking about Reverend Al Sharpton. Of course, mm -hmm. of course, you've you got to give him credit. When you, think about right. the, uh, when, when you think about the venue, if you will, exactly. that he has on a, yeah. on a daily basis, exactly. on radio, if you will. And uh, television. And television, and now television aspect of it. And because of his background and who he was and exactly. whatever, it, it was, it's as if to say, he, could, he was the only guy that could carry that baton. And, exactly. and actually, Jesse's there too. Of course, Reverend of Jesse course. Jesse Jackson is there also too. But we've got to give credit to this guy. This guy exactly. is just, I mean, to, for him to be doing this 24-7. Right. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out where his right. There are right. several right. Exactly. campaigns, Trayvon Martin, one of them, that had Dr. Sh uh, Reverend Sharpton not gotten involved, yeah. we wouldn't know anything about exactly. them. Yeah, exactly. And he has, you know, he's got his national action network that is... Um, that his, you know, he's on his radio show and he's saying to people, uh, hold on, we're going to take that information down and we're going to get back to that. Because mm -hmm. I remember when they called me in about Trayvon, I was listening, I tried to listen to him religiously. And, and he said, we will get back on that and we will be down there. Well, you know, on that same point, the Trayvon Martin case aspect of it was good for America. Of course it was. We're having the discussion. Consciousness. And, and this, we're having this, the whole issue of racism, uh, uh, what, what's the what's the other the, the, the profiling aspect of it? Mm -hmm. uh, all these other the, the voting, everything is coming to the table to fruition. So I think at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be an inclusionary situation. Exactly. Fair. Is that exactly. fair thing to say? Exactly. Okay. So why don't we now, now that we've talked a little bit about that piece? Maybe before you yeah, go, go, can I can yeah, I add something else? here? Yeah, sure. Go on. Um, this is this is an issue, the latest issue of Ebony Magazine. Okay. And it has Trayvon Martin's mother and father and his brother on the cover. Okay, and let me give it. Let me, let me get that. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Go on, get that. Keep talking. And well, and the, and there are a number of articles in there that um, were very interesting and moving. And one of the things that I thought was interesting was the. Um, aspect of the voting rights okay. bill that the uh, Supreme Court mm -hmm. um, overturned. And I was very upset when it was overturned. And then someone else said, this might be one of the best things that's happened to us because we've become complacent in thinking exactly. that exactly. 
we have rights. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a whole section in here about Trayvon, but the part that really got me was a couple of young men, and it says 17-year-old black males speak out. Um, and, and one of them said um, that I'm not afraid of anything. And, and so I have equal rights. And, and, and I thought, really? <laughs> it really it says not um but one of the other young men said what, the question was what are you afraid of and he said not being able to live long enough to show the world my full potential to make a greater change in this world mm -hmm. so there are a number of you know things in here where some young men are saying well it's no big deal i have my rights and and one of them said i have my rights and i'm going to enforce those and i thought you really have not seen this world for what it truly is. And, and that's one of the things that kind of, you know, sticks in my mind is the fact that, again, empowering our young people, you know, to really understand uh, what the struggle was all about. If you get a chance, if you see the butler, there's a scene in there, and my wife and I was debriefing afterwards because there's a couple spots, three spots in there, four spots where tears just wanted to come to my oh. eyes because mm -hmm. it, it couldn't help but just think about what our parents and our forefathers have gone through in order to get us to the point where we are. But the lunch counter situation, oh, yeah. when they were trained to go into a situation where people were going to talk about you, they're going to spit on you, they're yeah. going to knock you yeah. down on the floor, they're yeah. going to kick you, and when you go outside, they're going to put hoses on you, mm -hmm. they're going to put dogs on you. How many of us realistically could absorb that today so the commitment from the civil rights movement the training i mean it, it I mean it's uh it's just from above as far as i'm concerned from the standpoint of the, them being able to absorb that kind of treatment and still stand tall well look i want to talk since i've got both of you both of you were teachers you were in the educational system still teaching right now you're born and raised the whole right, right here in aspect of it and i want your feedback let's talk a little bit about that Ken, you know, you were vice principal there. You, you basically, vice principal at Jefferson High School. Everyone knows about Jefferson High School. Too. And acting principal, right, too. And acting principal <laughs> also, too. And you, you went to Jefferson High School and whatever. Let's talk about when you, were, when you were there and bring it up to today in terms of our young people today. How do you feel? You, you well, know, I feel. guess one of the things as a student at, at Jefferson High School, I felt that I, I got a pretty good education uh, from the standpoint that we had teachers, some that needed some improvement, but we also had teachers that were doing exceptionally well. For example, I'm going to use music as a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Don Wolf was one of our teachers who basically embraced all students. And, and we were both in the choir. We were both in the choir together. Our last year of high school, Jefferson High School, we, we went to Japan, raised almost $65,000 thanks to Don Wolf because he wanted to expose us to more than just the community. And the year before, we went to Canada. Hmm. And the year before, it was Rose, uh, Roseburg. <laughs> so we kind of had to progress. Well, well th that was my senior year, because that was yeah. the only year I was in choir, okay. and I was in special choir, okay. and I remember we went to Vancouver, B.C. That's right, right. And, and the whole choir went. And then they, we, we kind of got our teeth wet, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of, and they raised even more money. And were more of a success, and and uh, Mr. Wolf was was ahead of his but, time. But now that excellent. was considered a voc ed piece, right? At that no, point no, time. no, 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 was, no. It, it, voc ed, vocation, education was no. there at that time. Well, was kind it, of no. Right no, it's just part of a regular curriculum. Just a regular music. curriculum. Just was music. part of the regular curriculum. What happened? Uh, what happened? To <laughs> what happened? Well, I think just over time, you over know, time. over time, and and I think sometimes budget. Issues, constraints, and also All right, he's still individuals. teaching. I'm not. I'll say this. <laughs> Wait a minute. I will say this. I'm not through yet. No, what, no, what no happened, he's Donna? being nice. What, going, he's Donna? being what nice. What happened, Donna? What happened is testing. 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 And what has happened is that we have changed the focus. We've changed the That's focus true. from giving children a full education, a liberal arts education, to giving them a focused education What's so the that they can focus? pass what does that mean? well so they can pass the test pass the test right i mean because Standard all based. the time <laughs> the time that you're taking up teaching music they could be taking you know doing an extra reading class and you know the time you you're using teaching home ec or shop they could be doing another math class mm -hmm. you know yes. and yep, that's, that's what true. they do i mean I, the last year i taught i was teaching third and fourth graders and they were they were basically on a junior high schedule they called it walk to read, walk to math, 
you know and so instead of having a full teacher and yes there are some advantages to having children uh, ability based but there are advantages to, if you have an excellent teacher mm. to having a child in that classroom where you can work on developing self-esteem where you can work on developing skills where you can work on teaching a full curriculum and teaching not only the full curriculum but teaching children how to use those things in life and the music program there are kids who don't get math and who don't get reading mm -hmm. but they'll get it through through music right right they'll right, get right, it right, through right, right. they'll get it through art. Music no, is mechanics right. 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 Exactly. they'll get it through right. home ec. i right. mean right. Exactly. you know but what happened what happened to those well I, well i think I mean, I also I it's based on relationships too you know okay. So, okay. i mean because there there's there are constraints out here i mean in order to maintain certain types of of certificate uh, programs you have to do this and take this and take that and then there's increased amount of requirements for statewide and and federal wide and all those things have to be factored in regards to what a person has to do so there's only a certain amount of time during the day for folks to get certain things done i think from my experience yeah. dealing with mr wolf what the kind of teacher he was he lives down the street from me right now oh, mm. he kidding? does yeah wow. he had well, open heart surgery uh, but he's, he's doing well he's about 90 years old and he's wow. still very much alert but one of the things that he did and i think that many teachers do is that they develop personal relationships with right. students so students feel like art pearl says in his book atrocity of education mm -hmm. students must feel useful competent and belonging mm. and so that's one of the things that mr wolf did and matter of fact the MLK program that we've been doing for 28 years wow. is a result of, again, what Mr. Wolf gave us in high school. Because what he did, he took all types of music. Remember the barbershop quartets that we were able to put together? We had a gospel group, which is part of the total music program. So we, we, that was Exactly. Yeah. So there wasn't a music program where we just had to do one style. We did a variety of different styles. Another person who was instrumental in our in our background, um, I was a music minor, mm -hmm. and um, Sammy Piazza there at Highland School. There we go. There we go. Exposed and, us. And and I remember Mr. Piazza played violin. Um, I remember singing classical music. I remember singing um, show tunes. There were all kinds of music that we were exposed to, you know. And and they had sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade choir. I mean, there exactly. were there were a myriad of, of facets that we were exposed to, and it wasn't just singing. We mm -hmm. were exposed to um, he exposed us to jazz. I remember he'd bring his record set, and you know, and we'd listen to different artists and everything. It takes Barbara O'Hare to talk about Mr. Oh, Piazza. She, she knows so, yeah, she's a regular so, so, Barbara. But, but one we did we had test. We did music theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just fluff and stuff. We were seriously into learning about music and about the theory and the notes. Well, now and tell me now, everything. Now, tell me now, that was music. Yes. But what about the other vocals, like like metal shop and like carpentry, like home ec and things of that nature? Wasn't that was that not existing at doing it that? Was. Yes, it yes, was. It was. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You when did it stop? It. When did it stop? I can't remember exactly when it stopped. It was kind of phased, you right? Know, uh, but because again, because of budget constraints and what they call FTE limitations, reductions, and all those kinds of things, that is just over time. You well, know? What, what about but, this big push? And we, we we're all familiar right. with that. The big push about well, you need to go to college. If you're going to be somebody, you got to go to college. You got to get right. that degree. Exactly. What happened to those blue collar jobs? Those vocab jobs. What <laughs> happened? I mean, I remember now for our former mayor, uh, Mayor, uh, mayor Vera Katz, you know, mm -hmm. as you know her, and I think right. Roberts, that's, uh, I think she was a state secretary of state. Mm -hmm. There was a big program. Mm -hmm. I, they were pushing that whole issue about let's get the degree program aspect of it. And, and, and the, the so-called voc ed stuff was just sort of set aside. Demon artists came to town, right, naturally. Right, right, And we got PCC. Yeah, uh, I was, right, right. Right, right. Exactly. And all of a sudden, now this K-1 to K-12, you didn't have anything in there. Right. Well, I think one thing is the fact that uh, and this is all the old basic all theory, this. the wheel that squeaks is the one that gets the oil. Okay. And if people are not squeaking, parents, if community is not stepping up, that's one of the things that, that is the result from yesterday, from the 50th, 50th anniversary of March, is mm -hmm. the fact that people have to be involved, mm -hmm. have to tell the legislators what they want, have to be involved. Either we're going to be part of the problem or we're going to be part of the solution. We can't mm -hmm. sit back and be complacent. Those days are over because our young people, all of our young people, not just African American, European American, all students are going to be impacted by the things oh, that the civil rights movement yeah. has done over yeah. the years. One of the things I've seen over the years is the United States was based on the concept of education. That education was 
the great divide. And so now we've put education, we were working toward having an educated workforce. And I think last time I was on, I talked about uh, Henry Ford and, right, and right. you know, the melting right. pot and having an educated workforce. Right. Well, now what has happened is that we, resources are becoming more scarce. Right. It's a level playing field. If you have NBA players, they're not just from the 50 states. The NBA players come from all over the world, so you have worldwide competition. When you call a company, you're not just competing with one person you know for you know you're not calling just someone here you might be talking to someone halfway around the world and so what i see yeah. happening is that it's becoming more of a world government mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when the euro mm -hmm. came into being i mm -hmm. started looking around going mm -hmm. hmm this sounds like world one world government mm -hmm. so the need for an educated workforce here in the united states is not as necessary as it is to have a, a educated workforce Throughout the world, and that's the, and that should be the curriculum, so to speak. Throughout should, the are, are world, we, are we are we at that point, Kevin? I'm Ken. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. My mama, daddy used to call me the same thing. So I'm used to it. <laughs> Ken, 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 that's all right. That's right. Oh, yeah. But you know, yeah, I had to tell you a story about that sometime. But you know, I think that you know, with, with outsourcing of resources, you know, uh, all yeah, those yeah. things are, are, are contributing factors to why we don't have a more kind of industrial types of uh, uh, classrooms for, mm -hmm. for the students, I believe, but also the fact of competition because we have to, and I'm not into politics, I despise politics yeah, I personally, agree. but we also have competition and jealousy kinds of things yeah. that are going on, yeah. I think, in every city. It's universal. Oh, yeah. And I think until we move more and more into the understanding that we are in the same pot, yeah. right. we yeah. are all in the same yeah. Yeah. place, right. and it defeats us to say anything that is incorrect right. or do anything that is incorrect that might tear or pull another person crabble effect style. Tell you what, on that particular note, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come right back and, and keep on going. We'll be right back. I have a theory about that. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're just kind of reflecting on the whole issue of the 50th anniversary of, the, of Dr. King's speech, and uh, have been well all over the country for that man. In fact, all over the world. I mean, mm -hmm. he's had impact on everyone all over the world, and so we've had the discussion here with uh, with, with Ken Berry. Look at that. I got yes, that. Ken Berry, and 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 Donna. Hi, Donna. Hello there. Race talk. I like that. I, re I like that. I like that. And we've got, we're just being joined now by by a gentleman, Reverend Reverend Matthew Cummings. Thanks for having uh, me again. Matt's been in town here for for a little town. I told him right, right about the, he has a certain amount of immunity, right? Uh -huh. For sure, because he's just gotten here, right? All right. And so we're taking advantage of that. Okay. Oh, that's Matt great. was Matt joined me at the at the march uh, the other day, and I uh -huh. uh, went down the waterfront, and I and it was very interesting. And I'd like to, in fact, I'd like to get his comment. 
in terms of what his observation was, because he didn't know all the characters that we knew. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. knew all the folks that we knew. Matt, what did you think about that? Uh, it was very inspirational. Um, uh, every time I think in regard to Dr. Martin Luther King and what uh, he has meant to our country, uh, being there amongst uh, a, a, a people of all different races, uh, hearing the not just the speech um, uh, returned or, or um, uh, recited, but just all the enthusiasm that um, uh, the fight is still on, mm -hmm. it still goes on, uh, was very um, what I would consider um, uh, encouraging. And yet at the same time, I was left wanting more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to see more done. Um, and to be honest with you, I really wanted to hear a lot more about jobs <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, honestly about a new direction. Good. Appreciate that. We're going to get a little bit more with, with Matt in regards to so he's doing something in the event this next Saturday, and I'm going to talk about this point. I want to get back to uh, uh, highlighting some of the things that you all are doing. It's, it's now, now it's kind of like, folks, where are we going to go from here? Yeah. We've, we've heard the speakers. We've heard the speech. Uh, you know, the bottom line, we, 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 can't, we, we don't have the time, if you will, to just continue to spend the time to talk about these accolades. Sure. I mean, I respect Dr. King. I respect his time. I mean, nowadays you can just Google it. You can, you can record it. Exactly. It'll be in the newspapers and this, that, and other. But where do we go now? We got, we're talking about an incarceration rate among black, young black men. It, it, it was saying something about the incarceration rate for the, for the entire country is something like 3 million. And of that 3 million, 1 million of them are African American, young males, young males in the institutions, if you will. So where do we go from there? You know, the, the, the whole idea of you do the crime, you do the time, you get out, and you're still in the crime. These young people can't get jobs, this, that, and the other. And then those folks who haven't even gotten to the point where they can commit a crime, if you will, the education system is having a tough time. And then the whole issue of IE, and I want to talk about this, that's why, Ray, that's yes, why Don yes, is here, yes, the whole yes. issue of race. Yes. And you know, people get very nervous about the whole issue of racism, being called a racist, or right. discussing the issue of race. And that's why Don is so important. We need to just have these discussions about the whole issue of race. Very, very important. So anyway, I think talk. what comes to my mind is the fact that we've got to educate our young people our young men and women. We need to make sure that they are understanding that the things that they take in, whether it be music or video, whatever, that they're able to process it and realize that everything that we see or hear is not necessarily the truth. Hmm. So I think, again, back to what Reverend Laurie talked about yesterday, when we come back, we got to learn how to agitate. When I say agitate, I'm talking about agitate our young people to preserve them, to make sure they understand the struggle is not over. Mm -hmm. It's beginning mm -hmm. in many, many different cases. We also had to prepare our young people. One of the things we're trying to do with our MLK program, right. been here, been doing this for 28 years, you know, with, with the general public, you know, with Portland right, Public right, Schools right. and the unions, all that stuff. But we actually started in 1978. But as you know, I'm a musician. Right, I right, play in right, church. Right, 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 I do right, a lot right, of funerals. Right, 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 right. I'm saying to myself, well, what do we do to help preserve this particular program and all of our programs? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing right now is this next year with the Martin Luther King program, we're bringing in young people to begin to make them ambassadors. So they understand Beautiful. how to plan, Beautiful. how to develop. And again, hopefully those particular traits, uh, traits or skills and experience that we plan to give young people can be translated into their moving to leadership positions, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Not just community-wise, but mm -hmm. political-wise. Mm -hmm. Because even though we, we, I don't necessarily like politics, but right, I realize right. that yeah, over the years, it, politics yeah. are there yeah. because we have to, we live in a society that we have to deal with politics. Right. I think, again, back to the consciousness level, if I may use that phrase from Dr. Yes, Haynes, yes. is that we have to raise the conscious level of our young people. And also another part that I was talking about with Teresa Redford this week was about the fact of our senior citizens. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can't leave them alone, yeah, that's right. okay? That's because right. as we look around the community and see how mm -hmm. the community has changed, with all due respect, a lot of our senior citizens are becoming older and not knowing how to prepare so that their property remains yeah, in the right. family, right. so that their property that's remains right. the same. And I'm just, not a criticism, but just an yeah. observation. So if was, as we're talking about conscious level, it's not only for our young people and where we are now, but also for our senior citizens good as well. Point, good point. Mm -hmm. Donna, what do you think? Yeah, racism was another it's a major issue. Aspect. Maybe you can do the same thing and give us sort of an update of some of the things that you've done at this point in time and then your last session. Okay. Um, 
Race Talks is a program that was started with McMinimins Kennedy School and Uniting to Understand Racism, mm -hmm. uh, which is a program that uh, Maceo Pettis was one of the founders of. Maceo. And, and um, there's some different attorneys and judges around the city. And, and we've all come together to bring about a discussion. It, this formal name is Race Talks, and uh, un, um, breaking the chains of of racism, an opportunity for dialogue. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of race talks is come. We only talk about issues of race. Uh, we bring people in who will discuss an issue, a particular topic, for an hour, and it might be a film, it might be speakers, um, and then we have discussion for an hour. And it's facilitated dialogue. And what makes us different is that we have people trained to talk about the issue of race. And um, we've had some really dynamic talks. I'm a little prejudiced, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you but, had one. You had the last one you had, I thought it was heavy. Would well, the last, Give the, us an update the last on ones we had How were really, react? really interesting. We had one. Um, at Jefferson High School, uh, Trayvon Martin. It was uh, Trayvon Martin, a catalyst for Tra Trayvon Martin's death. And what was the makeup? Yeah, my biggest. What was the makeup of the crowd? Yeah. Um, the crowd was was mixed race. We hmm. had I saw mostly white, okay. but African Americans, Asians, Latinos, um, Eastern Indian. Okay. I mean, I saw all kinds of people there. Uh, I saw blind people. I saw people in wheelchairs. I mean, uh, there was an, uh, a mixed interested. group, and we had over 80 people who showed okay. on a two on a Tuesday night. And this was Tuesday a night. night. This was the uh, the first Tuesday of the month in Jefferson High School's cafeteria, and. Um, it was the neighborhood night out, so I wasn't sure what kind of crowd we were going to get, but we had over 80 people who came in to race. Teresa Rayford spoke mm -hmm. and talked about, um, and one of the reasons I asked Teresa to come and speak is because she is a person who's a catalyst for change. She helped to organize the original rally we had here in Portland after Trayvon's uh, murder. And so um, the, the, the con concept of the whole talk was Trayvon is dead. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do to bring him back. Mm -hmm. There's no amount of consoling we can give to his parents. It's not going to change their pain. But we can do something for the Trayvons who are here. And so we had uh, about seven different organizations that work with youth here in Portland. And I, we encourage people to sign up to volunteer with those organizations because it's one thing to say, I'm an anti-racist worker, or I believe in integration, or I think everyone's equal. It's another thing to put your put your body, put your yeah, money, put exactly. your mouth exactly. where your mouth is. Go into action. Do something for young people. And it's not until we break away from the talk and get into action, and getting to break down those those social barriers and getting to know people. Okay that it will change. Uh, we also had one the second Tuesday of the month at Kennedy School, and that was microaggressions. Before you, before you go there, though, okay, okay. give me some response to some of the folks. What, what kind of some of the responses you were getting in the Trilonga from the people that were sitting in the audience? Well, one of the concerns they had, is, is which is always the case, is that, um, first of all, I think most people thought we were going to do something else. I, they didn't really look at the title. I thought they thought they I think they thought we were going to talk about Trayvon, mm -hmm. and there was very little said about Trayvon. Because, like I said, we can't go backwards. Okay. That's over. That's okay. done. Take that anger. Take that uh, outrage, and put it to use to help youth. And so, some of the, the you know people were very encouraged. They were um, there. Uh, we always get comments like, "This is this is so needed." And we, I've been wanting to find some place where I could talk to people and get to know other people who were like-minded and had an interest in helping to change the the. Um, the horizon of, of the world and so um, lots of good good comments, good comments. Lot, you know every so often we get a negative one mm -hmm. and um, w one of the comments that I thought was interesting someone made the comment that I was uh, that this was self-serving for me and I thought wow that's really interesting because if there's one thing that I didn't expect out of doing race talks was being on shows like yours really I, I was expecting to be more <laughs> of a um, I, I guess it's more like kind of the teacher thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in the background and you're you're teaching, and then you step back and you let your kids do the program. Mm -hmm. And so, the program race talks was my kids. I'm not the star of the show. <laughs> you know, it's my but the you speakers. Are. <laughs> well, I I I, I, I didn't. That's me. I, I don't see it that way. 
I mean, I'm accepting it. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm a little gotcha. slow. It's been three years, and I'm finally <laughs> accepting that. But, 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 you know, for me, it's just about, it's like being a parent or mm. a teacher. You know, you, your kids are the stars. The program, the people talking, that's what's the exciting part for me. And um, that's what I think is so meaningful for, for the community to be a part of and to, to have a vehicle so that there are no excuses for mm -hmm. well i would but no now we have two race talks and we're working toward getting but more you need of them the going. catalyst you know we, it's about communication it's about yes, education it is. because yes, we are creatures of our exposure i made that point before and habit and a lot and habit <laughs> and a lot of folks in all due respect haven't had that and we've got to bring it to the table. Like yes, Ken was saying, you know, a lot of the a lot of the old warriors are dying. I, I saw Kent Ford there the other day. Yes, sir. And I'm yes, gonna try to pull his rear end back go. on here and put him on the show again. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of contribution, if you will. Sure, his son kinda got into some issues oh, yeah. or whatever. Yes. And but but you, you know, you look around and you see these folks mm -hmm. that can bring this kind of well yourselves and whatever. We can't lose that. No. We've no. got to get to the front of the table. And, and what something. Ken didn't say is we're all senior citizens, no, not, not you. No, no, not, no, yeah, not yeah, you. Yeah, no, oh. not me. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> now, he is a part of that deal. I, I don't really rush him. He's a little young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I, we got we got about 15 more minutes. But just just in case, I want to bring I want to bring um, uh, uh, Matt to the table here for a moment to give you a better feel of what Matt. And the way I met Matt was that, as you know, I, I've identified myself as a Republican, a Lincoln Republican, because I feel very strong about the fact there's a history with the Republican Party among black folks. A lot of folks don't know. And so I'm always saying Lincoln so people can go back well, my grab Lincoln, Lincoln and get that whole piece. Yep. Buffalo and soldiers. And my father was too. Yeah, Buffalo well, soldiers and all this. Very yep. much so. Yep. Buffalo soldiers. Yep. Yep. You know, a lot of times right. people think about Truman actually mm -hmm. integrating it. It was Lincoln mm -hmm. way back in those days, if you will. And so uh, here comes Matt, if you will, uh, along. And, and uh, he's also outreaching. I, but behind that, besides, besides that, I, the reason why he, he doesn't know this, but I'm telling him today, is that... Uh, as part of my outreach, you remember when Romney made the statement about the 47 percent, mm -hmm. you know, i.e. that they should get out there and naturally they always include the minorities and this, that, and the other than blacks. And I said, well, boom, that's good for me. The Lincoln thing is perfect. So as far as I'm concerned, now I'm the I'm the outreach chairperson for the Republican Party for Multnomah County. Great. Okay, and that's good. So I'm out, yeah. but I'm outreaching to the, my, my my Republican brothers and sisters first because there's a calendar called the, the Freedom Calendar that George Bush put together. Mm -hmm. People that were in the mm -hmm. calendar, like uh, Colin Powell and mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Abernathy, you know, sure. a lot, a lot sure. of blacks, but a whole bunch of folks. But it was America, it's a sure. progressive way. Sure. But the bottom line is, I'm outreaching. And so, Matt, I met Matt because he's in this process of putting together, he's, he's doing his outreach in himself to a certain degree. And so, he's putting the program together and, and he's outreaching to folks like the Tea Parties and anybody he can get to, to sit down and listen to, to trying think. to get together and That's think. Right. And, I, and I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with that. Wonderful. And so as a result Wonderful. of that, I'm supporting Matt, and uh, he's going to give us a little quickie about what he's doing this Saturday. Why don't you tell him what this sure. real the, quick, like what you're going to do? It's called the Northwest Convergence Project. Okay. And uh, it's at the Red Lion on the river. And basically, in a nutshell, um, where we're looking to go is to uh, find creative alternative solutions, and the key word is solutions, to help our fellow Americans come off of government dependency mm -hmm. and back into work, back into um, um, being more productive uh, as, as citizens themselves. Now, when I say that, I'm, I'm not saying like what has been the case with most of my Republican brothers who have basically said, these people have gotten in here because they're lazy. That is mm -hmm. a wrong scenario. Mm -hmm. And as an Afro-American myself, I know better than that. Okay. The economic situation has shifted such, and and most of the time, it's usually our people that are suffering when when the economy does a downshift, plus all of the other kinds of what I would consider um, uh, uh, racism in accordance with uh, institutions and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So um, right now, I've I've been working with other conservative blacks, uh, uh, Pastor C. O. Bryant and uh, Pastor um, Stephanie Broden's coming in from Louisiana and Dallas, Texas, and they're gonna be speaking. And uh, just basically beginning to get dialogue amongst people, amongst Christians, and things of that nature to, to find ways, instead of complaining, well, these people are a certain way, let's find a way to see how we can get people on all sides 
to begin the dialogue and find common ground and work towards seeing how we can see this economy get back on its on its feet, but even more importantly, uh, help our fellow Americans okay, and good. things like that. Well, everybody needs to be at the table. That's the whole exactly. idea. Exactly. Regardless of what your, your background, what your feelings are, what your positions are, and whatever, we need to have those discussions because it's like anything else. I'll learn a little bit more from Matt. We can agree mm -hmm. to disagree, mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is we need to all be at the table because we're all set at various What's tables. What's the time of that on Saturday? It was Saturday. What time was from that, Matt? From 9 in the morning until 9 at night. It, it's an all-day event. Is there a cost? And yes, there is a cost. It is $50. Okay. Um, what that does is that that they get you in. Um, there'll be praise and worship in the morning, okay. uh, ministry, uh, education workshops. Um, then uh, Bruce Bazaar. Me and Bob's going to be there doing that's right. educating some of his audience. Okay. We're going to have right. an interview type thing. A panel okay. thing in Wonderful. the afternoon. Yeah. And, and then uh, uh, the right. 50 not only covers all that, but it covers a dinner in the evening, and we'll have a lot of different um, uh, speakers who will be speaking during that uh, evening time as well. Um, now, a lot of the people that are coming, um, have, for a number of them, have never wanted to face this issue. How can you help your fellow Americans? Stop complaining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop. Don, Donna should be making a presentation. <laughs> Stop complaining. <laughs> Stop uh, uh, assuming that everyone of a certain race is a certain way. Sure. It's time to do something. And, yes. and, and I have found a response more than what I had thought. Wonderful. Very interesting. Great. Yeah, Excellent. I think Excellent. it's happening because Excellent. again he's had that he's got that short window yeah. right now. Right, see, right. so we're going to work on that Im immunity situation because after he gets mm -hmm. over that there, you know what happens then. Right. He gets into politics with the rest of that. Other May stuff. I ask, is there a way to pre-register or? Yes, okay. online. In yeah. fact, the, you got a website there. Uh, yes, the website is nwconvergenceproject.com. Okay. Good. 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 But I want to make sure that Matt got that little piece in there. And, and like Beautiful. I said, wow. Bob Williams, is, Bob should be coming here. In fact, he should be giving us a call. He was out doing something else. But the sure. whole idea, as you know, there was a big, uh, the whole piece of, 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 uh, of jobs. A. Philip Randolph sure. basically started this whole thing exactly. way back then, organized this whole piece. And Bob Williams was very, very much involved with mm -hmm. the whole issue of oh, yes. A. Philip Randolph. And then there were several other notables that were around that were talking to this piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, we, we're kind of putting something together to get Wonderful. to the unions, get okay. to the unions together right. and go back to the schools like we did before to try to see if we can get voc ed back. Yes. Using the unions and that background expertise and, and, and teach these kids some of those blue-collar jobs, right. which as far as I'm concerned is, is, is well, very much needed, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. to try to address some of the issues, to try to counter exactly. some of the issues that a lot of those folks are incarcerated and whatever. We well, it's not just blue-collar jobs. These are life skills. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. I mean, yes. many of Thank the you. things, you know, when we were in music, yep. when we were in home ec, when we wood were in art, yes. wood yes. shop, yes. these yep. are life skills that, that we need. And you were saying, what about the blue-collar workers previously? blue collar, collar workers could dig a ditch they say go dig a hole over there now you need computer skills yeah. now you need math skills I mean so it's, it's much more involved yeah, I agree. I like that. and 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 it's much more involved and we need both the practical application and the theory mm -hmm. working together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay well, that's good. Now, now we got about eight more minutes. Uh, any, anything else from a, from a local perspective? What are some of the things that you're doing right now, Ken? Well, right now, I'm fixing to, to, to go back to work. Go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> 43 Principal? years of teaching. Uh, no, I'm, I'm teaching. I, I, I was, I'm, you going I, back? Yeah, I'm teaching part-time music, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, Great. Yeah, Where? yeah. Where? Bobby and, and, okay. uh, and uh, so I'm going to be going back. I love the kids, pre-K through yeah. seventh right, grade. Right, right, right. And Ken is a fabulous oh, he, he, musician. He's fantastic. Fabulous he, musician. You get him and well, Michael together, both of them. Those well, guys. They, they, well, they, well, I was just f having the flashback when she was talking. We took music from Miss Ingram, Miss Smith together, remember? Mm, Many wow. years ago, piano. Wow. Was that you? Oh, no, no. You and I had a piano recital. I took music from Mrs. Blanchard, who became Mrs. Ah, Hardy. Okay, got and, it. Okay. And we were in a musical recital So that's together. where it was. I remember. We I were remember. In a at the Y. I think it was the Y That or was something. one of the most nerve-wracking things to play <laughs> piano in a recital from all these people. Yeah. And my mama, I will never forget, she used to say, you know, if you don't practice your music, I think they're paying like a yeah. dollar fifty two dollars a, wow. a, 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 wow. a lesson. I'm gonna get rid of your piano. Oh, oh that's I, the instrument. Piano? Yeah, piano. And so I thought she was wow. kidding. 
And the next day, someone came and took her upright piano out the house, oh and I goodness. cried like a baby. Wow. Because that was, wow. my, that was my connection, you know, wow. to really developing and creative. And then next thing I knew, she bought two pianos. So <laughs> okay. I guess she, I guess she, was, she, she, she uh, still, she, still she, believed she in me. She was working, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she bought two pianos. But, you know, but, the, the other but, side yeah. of you're a successful businessman, you and your brother. You know, you, you, you put on an event that, that I really think is it's, it's, well, it's well worth it. Uh, I think um, it's done it's done good for the community because in many ways a lot of young people don't have nowhere to go. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Ken puts on a, a kind of a gathering. Uh, well, yeah, but, but brother, he, he, works, he works at the Conga Club and basically brings different people in. I mean, yes. And what he tries yes. to do, and I have to compliment him, I taught him radio when he's 11 years old. Oh, wow. Just to give you a little history, right three blocks from here, YSOL Radio. I got it on Facebook. Wow. We built a radio station thanks to Model Cities. Wow. Okay, back in the late to 60s or 70s. And that radio station was able to bring in different community folks together. My brother's one of those folks. 11 years old, he started radio. Wow. He stayed in it doing promotions and things of that nature. But he's bringing in, I guess, next week is uh, Michelet, you know, right. from. Uh, we got uh, a birthday coming. He's your got birthday a birthday. His? His your birthday. birthday. Yeah, I'm not getting you older. Oh, you're the one that's I'm becoming more seasoned. Oh, yeah, you're more seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting you older. <laughs> but yeah, he's doing a birthday situation on, on I guess the. And where is that located? Where is that? At the Conga Club on the corner of MLK okay. and mm. Alberta. Okay. And so, okay. yeah, Michelet. Okay. He's going to be doing that on the uh, September 1st, Labor Day weekend, and then a birthday celebration on the 7th. Oh, wow. I said, I'm sorry, the 6th. Oh, wow. My son's getting married. Oh, uh, so I got that on my head. Oh, wow. Seven. Congratulations. Oh, man. <laughs> it's hard to believe. <laughs> Time does fly. Well, Donna, real quick, Mike, what's your, ne what's your next uh, piece on Race Talk? Uh, Where is September it? 3rd at Jefferson High School. We have the Gay and Lesbian Perspectives. Um, main speaker is Khalil Edwards, and he's bringing two other people from Basic Rights Oregon to speak with him. And then on September 3rd, um, the topic at Kennedy School is talking with our children about race. Perspectives from three fathers for the Trayvons of Oregon. Mm -hmm. We have um, an African American father who has sons in the 20s and 30s, Michael Alexander, who's the mm -hmm. director of the Urban League, uh, Eric Suela, who is white and has a son in college, and Jorge. Jorge Mesa, who is Latino and has a son in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear about how fathers teach their kids about race from different grade levels and different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And um, I taught with both Eric and Jorge and have great respect mm -hmm. for Michael Alexander. So these are people who are not just talking. They are walking and living the mm -hmm. talk. That's going to be interesting. So you're going to have to come back and give us a report. Okay. And now you do video these, these, these pieces. Yes, they're on YouTube. You can go to McMiniman's Kennedy School, uh, McMiniman's Race Talks, and you can find all of the past race talks there. Okay, in the future, you'll link that over to Oregon Voters Digest. We, we, well, somebody yeah. will, but somebody will. You'll come over and give me a little update okay. on that. She mentioned all something right. really <laughs> important, and we're proud to work yeah. with World Arts also. With Good. Oh, World that's right. Projects. That's right. We, that's right. We, yes, now I'm working in partnership with World Arts. Wow. They're, they're one mm. of the sponsors. Well, so. One of the things we try to do with World Arts is really preserve African-American contributions in American culture. That's great. I like and that. so we're very proud, thanks to Teresa Refford, uh, that we've just merged also with the um, Obo Adi Legacy Project. Wow. We're working with Susan hmm. um, Adi, who is working towards making sure we preserve his legacy as well. Okay. And okay. then last but not least is January 20th. Wow. It's wow. the next MLK Gee. program. Wow, yes. And we're, we're going to have a show on that one. We're going to have a show on that one. We're going to have a show on that one. Well, folks, this has been great. This has been enjoyable. Matt, thank you for being here with us. Uh, Ken, it's always a pleasure. My pleasure. Always Thanks a pleasure. Us. Donna, always a pleasure. You. And you guys are going to continue to be here on that. Because that's what it's all about. We've got to educate the folks. They don't have the vehicle sometimes, but they do come and they do look at the show. And we I think that's very, you. very important. Thank, thank you, you okay, for doing this. Well, thank you very much for being with us, okay? Thank you. Have a good one. Folks, have a good one. A little short, real quick, but hey, we'll be right back. See you later on. See you next week for that.